the newspaper clippings that I saw in the last three days. You know, there was this very cheerful announcement in the front page of Business Line a couple of days back, which actually says that retail investors are coming back into the market and there are some 190 different firms uh, where retail holding has actually gone up. So I said, oh, wow, you know, retail investors are back. You know, let me just check what kind of list it is. And I was actually not surprised to know uh, that none of the nifty companies are making into the list. The entire list is full of companies, uh, which, you know, in a moment, we'll show you that uh, clipping uh, right here. Yeah, so if you've seen that clipping, uh, you will realize what kind of companies uh, retail holdings have actually uh, gone up. And then there was this another clipping which actually told me that there has been a big rally in small and mid caps, but investors were not able to participate because the shares were suspended or uh, delisted. And then I said, okay, let me see, you know, what kind of shares are suspended. You know, typically shares get suspended from exchanges if they don't file their quarterly results, if they don't file their shareholding patterns, etc. And here we are now going to share with you a list of companies, uh, how many shareholders they have. And, uh, you know, these are the companies which got suspended, so people couldn't, you know, there's no movement in the share price. Uh, so you can have a look at the clipping. And here again, I'm sure you would have noticed that the topmost company has more than 4 lakh shareholders, which is much more than even the number of shareholders I told you for a company like Sun Pharma or iShare or HCL Technologies. So what I find interesting is that investors, when they are themselves buying stocks, they have what we call a shampoo sachet kind of mentality. You know why, right? I mean, uh, if you buy shampoo, uh, the bottle costs 100 rupees. But a lot of these shampoo companies, uh, they actually sell, make larger business by selling sachet for 2 rupees. The logic is that people are very happy to buy a sachet for 2 rupees. Uh, and you know, if you actually do the grammage and multiply it by the cost of the unit price of the sachet, you will find that the cost is almost 2 times. The same logic applies to shares. Uh, people love to buy something trading at 5 rupees, but they will never touch anything which is trading at 10,000 rupees. Uh, because people don't understand the market cap and dilution related concept you know if there is something which is trading at 5 rupees but has 1 crore outstanding shares versus something trading at 10,000 rupees but has only 1 lakh outstanding shares then the market cap the earnings and the dilution is two completely uh, different things so people just have this sachet mentality uh, they love to buy what is cheap they love to buy what is popular but more often than not what is cheap is cheap for a reason and deserves to be cheap for a variety of reasons Whereas more often than not, what is perceived to be expensive may not be really expensive. Uh, you know, when you are buying shares, uh, ultimately you are buying the earnings and the dividends which are likely to come through in the future. Uh, it's not just the unit price that you are concerned with. And in very simplistic terms, you know, a lot of times people don't understand the concept of PE ratios as well. Um, one needs to be focused on the earnings. And I give this very common example at all points in time. Let's say that there are, you know, when summer comes, people buy mangoes. Uh, let's say there are two cartons of mangoes, each with one one dozen mangoes kept in it. Uh, there's one carton here which is trade, which is available for 500 rupees a dozen, and there's another carton here which is for 800 rupees a dozen. So I ask investors, you know, which one is more expensive, and obviously uh, the logical answer is 800 is more expensive. But the whole point is that you know you need some more data from me. If I were to tell you that eventually mangoes are converted to pulp, and the carton which is going for 500 rupees a dozen. Uh, you can get 8 classes of pulp from 1 dozen and the carton which is going 800 rupees a dozen you can get 18 classes of pulp uh, from 1 dozen so which one is more expensive now so that's the whole point you know there may be a stock trading at 10,000 rupees with an EPS of uh, say 100 rupees a share and there may be a, tra a stock trading for 5 rupees with the company going into losses the whole point is that people would prefer to buy the stock trading at 5 rupees because they have a sachet mentality Whereas people are least likely to buy the stock trading at 10,000 rupees because they have this, uh, you know, because they find that it's expensive. So this is clearly where professional management is extremely important because buying companies is singularly about trying to estimate the earnings and the likely earnings growth in future. And I don't think that very many people are absolutely capable of uh, doing this analysis on their own. And it's very important long in the long run, like I've shared in a couple of other videos of mine before this, it's extremely important to understand that in the long run, uh, wealth is created by buying good quality companies and riding the entire growth curve. That's why we always advertise buy right, sit tight. A lot of times what happens if in the, in the absence of professional advice, if people buy right, they tend to book profits. 
and uh, people buy cheap stocks and then they sit tight and they become long term investors. So this is something which we have discussed before so I am not going to repeat it. But I think professional management is extremely key. There is just one last data point which I wanted to share with you apart from those clippings that you have seen. Just one last data point I wanted to share with you when it comes to uh, the need for professional advice. You know, uh, if you take the entire market cap, as we speak now, the total market cap of our equity market is about 90 lakh crores, or, um, should be about 90 to 92 lakh crores. Out of this, 55% is owned by promoters, 25% uh, is owned by FIIs, uh, about uh, say 10% is owned by different institutions, and about 10 to 12% is owned by what we call non-promoter, non-institutional, that is retail holding. So this is on the entire stock market capitalization. So like I said, keep two numbers in mind. In the entire market cap, uh, FIs are about 25% and retail holding is about 12%. But what should this number be if you look at the best quality companies in India? You know, when you see best quality companies in India, they are part of Nifty, the 50 best companies. In fact, out of the 90 or 92 lakh crore which I told you, uh, just under 50 lakh crore is composed of Nifty. So the top 50 companies are more than half the market cap. And then there is a long tail of some thousands of companies which are the other half. So the interesting point for us to understand, you know, whether people are buying the right stocks or not, whether people are buying the right quality companies or not. I said that in the entire market cap, FIs are 25% and retail is about uh, 10 to 12%. When you look at Nifty specifically, take a wild guess uh, what the non-promoter, non-institution holding should be. What is retail holding in Nifty? In the entire market, it's 10 to 12%. But what is retail holding in Nifty? You'll be surprised to know it's 4%. And what is retail holding in, what is FII holding in Nifty? It's approximately between 27 to 28%. Now, you actually, if you analyze the entire market cap and take various cuts, when you take Nifty, you are likely to find that FIIs are about 27 to 28% and retail is about 4%. You move from Nifty to BAC 200, you will again find that FIIs are about 27 to 28% and retail holding is somewhere in the range of 5 or 6%. If you actually move on to CNX 500, you will find that FI holding drops all the way to 22% and retail holding actually goes up to about 8 or 9%. So what this actually this data actually tells you is that as you go down on quality, retail holding goes up and FI holding goes down. And as you go up on quality, FI holding goes up and retail holding goes down. And the reason for this is exactly what I told you that retail investors or people who are buying stocks directly without concern, without going through a portfolio manager or without actually uh, going through the right investment advisor, your investment advisor could be your stockbroker also or anybody. If you're not consulting a professional, if you're not going for mutual funds, if you don't have an investment advisor, if you don't have a professional PMS service provider, you're least likely, you're most likely to buy something cheap, which you perceive is cheap and hence you Go that much away from buying quality so i think these are some very very important lessons that one needs to keep in mind uh, thank you very much for giving me a patient listening uh, as always be in equity uh, be with motila loswal uh, buy right and sit tight uh, thank you very much mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully